All right, so we just want to get an overview of exponents. And I want to take a moment for things that you've learned in the past to make sense to you. So when you first learned about exponents, you learned two vocabulary words. The big number is called the base, and the little number up top is named the exponent. So I hope you remember those words. And we learned that the exponent tells you to multiply the base times itself that many times. So 3 to the 4th means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 81. And that makes pretty good concrete sense to us. And then we could decrease our exponent. 3 cubed would be 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. 3 squared would be 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 to the first power would just be 3. And it's a nice little pattern, and it all makes sense. And as long as you know your times tables, you understand exponents really well. And then somebody says, well, what if we have 3 to the 0 power? You say, well, according to what you have told me, teacher, that means to multiply 3 times itself 0 times. How do you expect me to multiply something by itself 0 times? All of a sudden, the thing that made sense does not make sense anymore. But math does make sense. That's the whole point of it. So if you forget for a minute about this multiplication business and look for the pattern, exponent, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, right? Exponents are going down. Look over here at your answers. 81 divided by 3, 27. 27 divided by 3, 9. 9 divided by 3, 3. The pattern has to keep going, right? That's what patterns do. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. So any number to the 0 power, except 0 itself, is 1. So a to the 0 for all a's not equal to 0, so your base can't be 0, equals 1. And that was something in school. I learned it. I memorized it. OK, any number to the 0 power equals 1, because Miss Dunlap said so. She was my seventh grade math teacher. But it was a really long time before anybody made it make sense to me. Now. Now we get into negative exponents. Well, the pattern's just going to continue. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Less than 0 is negative 1. So over here, the division has to happen. 3 to the negative 1 power must mean 1 divided by 3, 1 third. Has to. And then 3 to the negative 2 power Oh, well, let's take one-third and divide it by three. Well, remember what division means. That's one-third divided by three, which is one-third multiplied by the reciprocal. Oh, so it's one-third times another one-third. Or in other words, it's one over three squared or one-ninth. So do you see that when you have a negative exponent, that just means to have 1 over that base with the positive exponent. So 3 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 3 squared. Doesn't mean you're going to come multiply 3 by itself a negative amount of times. That just isn't going to happen. But the pattern, that explains the negative exponents. Okay, so I hope that helps some of you understand some things you were taught before. Now we want to go on to solving exponential equations. And um, as we solve these, we want to keep this goal in mind. And the goal is to try and get the same base.
So let's just jump into one and do it together. If I have 5 to the x power is equivalent to 25 to the x plus 3 power. So my goal is to get the same base. One base is 5, the other base is 25. But hopefully by this time in your mathematical life, when you see the number 25, you think of 5 squared. Do you? Yeah. I hope so. So you say, well, if this one's 5, I can turn 25 into 5 squared. Not that you're going to turn it into it. It's already equivalent to it. But you're going to write it down as 5 squared. Then you still have your x plus 3. And this side will just bring down as 5 to the x. So now I've got a power raised to another power. So again, let's kind of go over here on the side and review something that you've learned in the past. So when I raise a power to a power, like let's just say 8 to the second power, and then I want to cube it. That means to take 8 to the second power and multiply it by itself three times. So that's 8 squared times another 8 squared times another 8 squared. But that's 2 eighths, and that's 2 eighths, and that's 2 eighths, so it's 8 to the 6th power. So when you have a power to a power, you multiply these exponents. So when I come over here, if I multiply these two exponents together, I have to distribute the 2 and get 2x plus 6. Then my left-hand side is still 5 to the x. And now I just use a little bit of logic. If 5 to the x is the same thing as 5 to the 2x plus 6, that has to imply that x is equal to 2x plus 6. So it's not that I'm really making the 5's go away, but if I have the same base raised to two different exponents, but they're equal, then the exponents have to equal each other. Right? Just common sense. So now all I have to do is solve that little linear equation. Subtract 2x from both sides. Negative x equals 6. Divide by negative 1 x equals negative 6.